Are you experiencing the dreaded touch disease problem plaguing the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus phones? Don't worry, we have a solution. In this video, we're going to show you a quick overview on how to fix it, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Human from CellularDoctor.com. Thank you for joining us. In this video, we're going to show you how to fix the iPhone 6 and the 6 Plus Touch IC problem. Most people assume that they have a malfunctioning LCD touchscreen and only after replacing it realize that they are still experiencing no touch, partial touch, intermittent touch, gray bars across the top of the screen, and even ghost touching sometimes. This is when the phone will randomly work by itself pressing different buttons and performing weird functions even though no one is touching it, hence calling it ghosting. Quick note before we start. Remember, everyone's skill level is different. If after watching this video you decide that you would rather have your iPhone professionally repaired, we're here to help. You can find all the information you need in the description below. This is a very common malfunction, especially for the iPhone 6 Plus. So we've decided to make two different versions of this video. This will be the shorter one of the two videos, in which we're going to give you a quick overview of the problem and show you the repair sped up with less step-by-step -step explanation. If you feel the need for additional information before trying the repair yourself, we highly suggest that you watch the full version of this video, which I have linked above and also listed in the description below. So without further ado, let's get started. Go ahead and disassemble and remove the motherboard from the housing. We have sped up the disassembly process, assuming that you are already well versed in taking the iPhone 6 Plus apart. We are going to work on the back side of the board. So let's flip the board over and carefully remove the black heatsink tape covering the Mason IC chip. Applying a little heat will help to remove it intact so that you can reuse the same one during reassembly. Now we're going to place the motherboard in the heat resistant mat and remove the Mason IC chip that's causing the problem. Here we apply a small amount of flux to the top of the chip. Using the JBC hot air station set at 430 degrees Celsius and 40% airflow, heat the chip in a circular motion. When you feel the solder balls have melted, simply lift the chip up and out. It's very important that you do not forcefully remove the chip. Be sure to give it enough heat for all the solder to be loose before you lift it. There are a few different ways you can clean the solder joints. In our case here, we're going to cut a little piece of wick and using the hot air, very carefully clean and even out the pads to get them ready for the new chip. You can go ahead and use whatever method you feel more comfortable with. Now with a soldering iron, we're going to touch up some of the pads that still need a little cleaning. Go ahead and apply some no clean liquid flux. This helps with the cleaning of the contacts. As you can see here, the M1 pad is missing, so we will need to run a wire for it. This is usually the main reason for this malfunction. 
This seems to be a very fragile pad on this board. And in most cases, this pad is very loose and not making good contact to the board, hence causing the touch problems. Once we have the entire area cleaned up, we're going to run a small wire for the missing M1 pad. More often than not, the M1 pad is loose and very hard to see at a quick glance. And once you put the new chip in place, within weeks it will start to malfunction again. So if we feel that it's not 100% intact, we will usually repair it with a wire. This has reduced our warranty rate, which was only about 5% to less than 1%. So I highly recommend that you consider running this wire in most cases. Now that we have the wire nicely secured, let's go ahead and install the new chip. Put a small amount of flux on the board and line up the chip. Then put a little more flux on top of the chip while holding the chip in place. Apply some heat so that few of the solder balls melt in place and then remove the tweezers out of the way and continue to heat up the chip until you feel all solder balls have melted in place and are making good contact. Clean up the flux and assemble the phone to test it. If everything passes the test, then remove the board and ultrasonic clean it so that all the flux is off the board. Once the board has completely dried, go ahead and reassemble it again. Be sure to perform a complete test on all functions once you have completely assembled the phone again. In this channel, we try to bring you specialized videos on how to keep your devices running properly and to show you solutions on how to fix common problems. We're a full service repair center and can perform any of these repairs for you as well. If after watching this video, you would rather have this service professionally performed for you by a trained technician, please feel free to contact us and we will be happy to help. If you found this video helpful, please give us a thumbs up and be sure to share this video with anyone you know that may be experiencing a similar problem with their phone. We value your feedback and would love to hear back from you regarding your experience trying to follow this video to repair your phone. So feel free to post your questions and suggestions in the comment section below. Additionally, your comments are very beneficial to others watching this video and thinking about trying this repair. So please take a moment and tell us about your experience. Thank you so much for watching, and if you're new to this channel, don't forget to click the subscribe button to be notified of more tips and tricks on how to keep your smartphone running efficiently. We wish you all the best with your repair.